often been asked, how to export Excel or CSV data through Rails? Well, that's what I want to tackle in this episode. Here I have a list of products, and I would like some download links at the top here to download either a CSV or Excel file. Now, there are many gems that help do this, but I won't be using any of those here. It's pretty easy just to do it yourself. Now, there's an excellent CSV library that comes with Ruby 1.9. It was formerly known as Faster CSV in Ruby 1.8. Here I'll be using this library to generate the CSV data. Since this is part of the standard library, all we have to do is require it. I'll be doing that at the top of my application config file. I'll just add a line in here to require CSV. Now I can use that to generate comma-separated data when a .csv extension is used in the URL. Now currently this doesn't work because it doesn't respond to that format yet. That's easy enough to remedy by going to my products controller index action, which is the page that was being displayed, and then add a respond to block here to handle the HTML format and the CSV format. Now from here I have a couple of choices. One option is to generate a new view template for the specific format, or I could just keep it all within Ruby and render it in line here. I'm going to go with the latter option because I tried both approaches and find this approach a little simpler. So I could call render text and then generate the CSV content here. Now I'm actually going to do that inside of the model because uh, I'm going to create a new method called 2CSV, which parallels nicely with 2XML or 2JSON methods that Rails provides. And then going into the product model, I can define that class method called 2CSV, and I can use the CSV library here to generate some uh, comma-separated data. So this is how you do it, and you can just append an array of values to the CSV object which is passed into this block. So this first line will just be a header row, and I'll set this to uh, column names just to do all the columns, but you might want it to be more specific and only add certain columns into here. And then I can loop through all the products, so that's all.each, and then for each of the products, I want to insert a row into the CSV, and I'm going to use the product attributes, but only the values which are matching the column name. So this way we make sure that they're in the proper order. Now you may need to restart your Rails application to pick up the CSV library, but once you do and reload the page, there's all of our comma-separated data for the products. It works! Now if you want this content to be downloaded instead of rendered in line in the browser, you can use send data instead of render text in the controller. So now when I reload this page, it'll download that content as a file. So now what about an Excel file? Well, they could just import the CSV file straight into Excel, but it might be nice to have an actual XLS file that the user could double-click to open. To do that, we'll need to add a new MIME type, and we can do so under the config initializer directory under mimetypes.rb. So in here, I'll just register a new MIME type uh, dot register, and then it's called application slash XLS, and uh, that'll be the XLS extension. And then back in the controller, I can have this respond to the XLS format, However, it can't be simple comma-separated data. It needs to be tab-separated for it to open up properly in Excel. Now, fortunately, the CSV library supports a column separator option, which you can pass in uh, just passing in a tab character in there. So this means in the product model, I need to change this to CSV method to accept a hash of options, which I then get passed into that generate call in the CSV library. So now let's try passing in that XLS extension and this will download an Excel-specific file, so let's try opening it. And for the most part, this works fine. It opens up without any problem, and the columns are separated correctly. However, there are a couple of issues. For example, the uh, degree symbol here in this one product name doesn't look correct. It's not encoded properly. Now, there are some workarounds to this issue, but there are other problems with this approach as well, such as columns cannot contain new lines. Now, instead of doing this approach, I'm going to actually use a template for the XLS version. So under the views products directory, I'll make a new file here called index.xls.erb. Now I'm just going to paste in an HTML table into here containing the data I want to export because Excel has no problem opening and displaying HTML tables. Let's try this again. Download an XLS version and open it up. And that opens up fine. And you can see that degree symbol looks correct, and new lines would have no problem in the columns as well. However, it does look a little bit different because the HTML formatting is just adding a border around this table area, and the header looks different as well. But you can customize the formatting within the HTML document, and that will be reflected here as well. 
Now, if you want to generate a file that feels a little more like a native Excel document, you can do something like this. Uh, this is some XML that Excel understands. And what's neat about this is you can customize uh, different worksheets and you can format each column to a different type. And I'll try downloading this version and opening it up in Excel as well. Now in OS 10, this does bring up a warning dialog, making sure I'm okay with opening it. I guess because this format could contain something dangerous. So I'll say open. And there we go. This looks nice and it uh, doesn't have any encoding problems and really feels like a true Excel document. Now the best source of documentation I found for that format is this XML spreadsheet reference. I'll link to this in the show notes. Basically it gives you some documentation on each of the various tags which could be in that XML document. And another option is to reverse engineer this code. Uh, you could just save an Excel document as an XML file and then check that out in a text editor. There's one more thing left to do to finish up this episode, and that is add a couple of links to this page to download those two formats. So inside of my index.html template, I'll just paste in the code for this to add it those two links. And reloading the page, there are those links, and clicking on one will just download that specific format. It works. Well, that's all I have for this episode. Thanks for watching. In the pro episode this week, I continue off of last week's episodes and show you how to integrate Facebook further into your application using the Open Graph protocol. To watch that episode and gain access to all previous pro and revised episodes, visit railscast.com pro and you can sign up there for just $9 per month.